Well, we are here for another round of Stump the Scientist. We've got a great question this week. And the question, Jim, is this. If everything is in motion and we believe Newton's third law to be true, what started the motion? Okay, a good question to think about. First part of the question is, if everything is in motion, that's the hypothesis here. So is everything in motion? Well, obviously, standing here in this room, I would say there are some things not in motion relative to me. But if I look more closely at a stationary chair or the floor around me and start looking at the atoms inside of those objects, they're certainly in motion. The heat in those objects causes them to be in motion. So in that sense, the hypothesis in this question is approximately true. Everything is in motion if we look at it carefully enough. So the next part of the question refers to Newton's third law. Now Newton's third law says for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Now in this context action means force and so it's saying that for every force there is an equal and opposite counterforce. Now this is true within the classical laws of physics and for instance I'll demonstrate, I'll retrieve here a tennis ball obviously I push on this tennis ball, I easily move it. I'm applying a force with my hand, and I don't notice it, but when I do this, the tennis ball is so light I don't notice it, but it pushes back on my thumb, and the skin on my thumb will move back just a little. That's the reaction force. So we always have something like that taking place between forces. On the other hand, if I push on this wall, now I'm pushing myself if I'm pushing on the wall because the wall is much stronger than I am. Nevertheless, if I look carefully, the wall is giving a little bit. So the wall does move itself a little, mostly me, because the wall's got a lot more strength than I do. So that's what Newton's third law says. Now, the final part of this question is, okay, given that these things are true, how did everything go into motion? Well, now we go back to sort of the start of the universe, the Big Bang. After the universe began, four forces very quickly arose in the universe, and those four forces are gravity, electromagnetism, the weak force, and the strong force. Now, we are all familiar with gravity, and we all have heard and play with electricity and magnetism. The weak force and the strong force are forces we're less familiar with. They're in the nuclei of atoms. Nevertheless, all four forces are always around us. Now, these four forces taken together act on everything that we know of in the universe. Therefore, there are forces acting between everything by Newton's third law. All those forces have counterforces and they move things. And so the final answer to this question then is, it's the four forces that arose after the universe started in the Big Bang that cause everything to be in motion. Everything is attached to at least one of these forces, is acted on by one of these forces, and that causes motion of the things we know of in the universe. So that's the final answer. Now we can make the question a little more complicated by saying, okay, now how did the four forces arise? Now this is actually an object of theory right now in physics, and we don't know the final answer. Uh, so-called unified field theories are studying how the four forces arose from the Big Bang, so we don't know that answer. So we can go deeply enough that we can run out of human knowledge in this area, but I think we've given the basic answer to the question is the four forces that are responsible for all the motion and everything we see around us. Jim, thanks, and uh, to those that follow us on Twitter at Edison's Desk and on Facebook, keep the questions coming.